And I am here today to ask of you to do something simple first. Can everyone please close your eyes and imagine a future city, a utopia, where humans and machines sort of like merge together to create a thriving society. Now, please keep that image in your eyes as you open them and we continue on with the rest of the presentation. Today I'm gonna talk about artificial intelligence or as I like to call it, the inevitably of the, in I mean the impossibility of the inevitable. So, what is AI first and foremost? A stands for artificial. It's a state where something is made by humans, is manufactured, is created. Intelligence is the ability to think, to reason, to have logic, and figure out problems on your own when given. So what do we have when we combine those two? Artificial intelligence. An effort by humans to create a machine that thinks and acts like human, that we can just give problems to and they will figure out how to solve them. So, what are the applications and advantages of this? First off, let's talk about the opportunities. This is Sophia, an AI made in Hong Kong, who is the first AI to actually gain citizenship and has a passport. She is extremely technologically advanced and is able to hold debates, ask questions, questions her own existence at times, even though that might seem kind of scary. So we're gonna move on to something a bit simpler and easier to understand. Siri. Everyone here knows Siri. I can say, hey Siri, call your mom, and some phones will pick up and Siri will call your mom. It's actually pretty convenient. I use it every now and then. But it's an application of AI that is, albeit simple, very close to our daily lives. So what are the middle ground between these simple and complicated AI? First off, it's a Korean airport robot. I have been in Korea, these robots are really great. You can tell them, hey, I need to go to this gate because I have a flight at 5 p.m. and it will take you there in person. You can tell it to take a picture for you and send it to your family members and it would. It's great, it's smart, it knows how to compliment you and stuff too. And this is a robot that's painting, <laughs> painting. A job that requires a lot of finesse and skill in humans is now being done by a robot. How, how weird is that? How great is that actually? Imagine all the applications we could use in the field. Robots that does surgery, that gives patients medicines, robot that does construction, robot that kills us. Right, I guess we're getting to that. As um, a lot of people have pointed out, there is an, a fear of an inevitable robot apocalypse where the robot thinks they're inferior to humans and they would take us over with guns and bombs. So what leads to this actually? First off is chops. Humans can make a burger. Robots, they can also make a burger but with just the right amount of buns and mayonnaise and meat for it to be the best burger you have ever tasted in your entire life. And we're afraid of being replaced. Secondly, the idea that AI are inherently superior than us, as demonstrated in iRobot, starring Will Smith, is that the robot thinks of themselves as something more advanced than us. And they think that, why are we serving these lowly humans and we should rise up, which leads to the Terminator as um, a lot of you have probably seen and watched. You know the games, you know the movies, you know the unstoppable killing machines with rockets that they are. But I'm not here today to talk about that. I'm here to talk about why we should not be afraid, actually. What are these? This is a Simpson. This is a movie. This is another movie. What are they? They're mass media. Created by the people, for the people, for entertainment, and either exaggerated or invent a problem that isn't existing in the first place. So, be smart, consume. With deflated heritage comes deflated self-deception. Somebody has to try drugs, it may as well be you. These are quotes generated by an AI called Inspirobot, or as it calls itself, an artificial intelligence dedicated to generating countless amounts of inspirational quotes for humans. Now. Um, 
I can't speak for everyone in this room, obviously, but some of these quotes are not as inspirational as others, I'm sure. I'm sure. So, let us go on to the misconceptions about AI. First off, the AIs are smarter than us. <laughs> Google's advanced AI, everyone. So, they actually need a lot of time to be smart. How AI works is that you give them a problem and feed them very little info, and through trial and error, they will figure out a solution. But the key word here is through trial and error. They have to go through multiple iterations before they can reach the level of perfection that is required to perform the job that they're given. And that can take months, years, if not centuries. And as shown by a picture here, these are four AIs being told, walk. And the last one is better than all the others because he's generation 999. That means he has been doing the same routine of walking for nearly a thousand times before he can get to that level of perfection. In a way, it's similar to us. I did a math test last week and I flopped. But if I do that same math test 999 times, I will get to the perfect level. So, secondly, that AI are just straight up out of the box better than us, as demonstrated by a checkers match between Lee Zedol and Google's AlphaGo AI, in which the AI won and actually brought home a $1 million prize pool. So a lot of people use this and think that like AIs are better than us, they're gonna take us over, and to that my answer is no. What do we have that they don't? First thing first, the originality. Again, AI is a machine. You have to feed it information and it has to go through a lot of calculating process before it can come up with a proper solution or a product. Meanwhile, us humans have the ability to go to sleep, to suddenly dream of something that's very surreal and out of this world and may or may not have even existed in the first place. In fact, that's how AI came to be. Someone went to sleep and woke up thinking, I'm going to make a machine that thinks like a human. And it's something that machines themselves can never do because they need to rely on information bef <coughs> Sorry, beforehand. Secondly, the feelings. We have emotions. I'm not saying that AI can't have emotions. They totally can. But it's going to feel very machine and calculated. If you tell it something and it wants to react to that, the AI has to go through a process of taking apart your words and tones and it has to calculate the context it's in and to output an emotion. It feels very sticky, Don. It's not something organic or at least something as organic as when you tell your friend you killed his pet stone. And finally, what does that lead to? The humanity. We, as humans, are higher than animals. That's because we have the corpus callosum linking our two sides of the brain. That's because we have the EQ, the emotional quotient. AI have IQ. They are able to do and think and calculate things that we almost never can, but instantly. Meanwhile, AI has, I mean, I'm sorry, humans have the privilege of having emotion. A lot of you think that we have human errors and those are things that we need to fix, we need to eliminate. But have you ever asked yourself if that's what makes us human? I can be up here giving a presentation five times in a row and each time will feel different with a different tone, with a different voice. And it will feel somewhat fresh even with the same content. An AI can come up here, give my presentation five times in a row and it will feel like something you copy and pasted in five different documents. So it's just not the same. Us humans are humans. The AIs cannot replace us simply because they are a different entity. Now, I'm not saying that Google, I mean, I'm not saying that human sucks and AI is better. Neither am I saying that AI sucks and humans are better. What I'm saying is that we are different. So how about we work together? Think back to the utopia I told you to imagine at the beginning of the presentation. What if in that society, humans are the one who comes up with the idea, who has the vision, who has the purpose in life, and AI is the one who helps us actually doing it? 
what if AI can help us in constructing buildings and humans can think of those buildings in the first place? And I guess my main point today is just, why are we pushing the AI away? Or why are we afraid that they're gonna take us over? Why do we keep seeing this imaginary non-existent future of robots pointing guns at our faces and make us submit to them? Why are we afraid? So please, give them a chance. I conclude my presentation.